Thank you for coming back. Um, I hope you've had a good break. But um, you recall the concepts we uh, covered before the break this morning. Um, strategic thinking, flow variables, different types of games, the axioms of flow variables, coordination, games, power, intuitive thinking, cooperative thinking, stock variables, rigorous thinking, applications of those of business. I would like to stop here and uh, cover some point about the a particular concept, the same as what we did with the economic theory and all that, uh, because uh, in the past sessions, a number of uh, my colleagues and attendants have come in and, and, and uh, engaged me in the conversations, very useful conversations, and I thought it was worthwhile to draw upon on their feedback and their knowledge uh, to cover this particular thing. What is this? Is wealth. Wealth. What does wealth mean within the capitalistic system? You will see in our module tomorrow afternoon that wealth within our concepts is the desired outcome of a business strategy. We, discover, we, we explain the strategy, series of correlated decisions toward a desired outcome. That desired outcome within the context of commerce and business is called wealth. Series of correlated strategic decisions called tactics with respect to available information to create a desired outcome. That desired outcome, not within military, not within politics, but within commerce and business is called wealth. So let's see what it means. At least some conceptual things that I'd like to share with you, and I'm very interested in your views on those. Wealth within our capitalistic system, which we, discover, which, which we discussed before the break, is essentially this, is a disproportionate, accumulation of available economic resources around a particular economic agent. Wealth is the disproportionate accumulation of economic resources around a particular economic agent. Now this economic agent within the legal system could be a person, it could be a company, it could be a partnership, whatever. An economic agent is doing some economic activities within the economic system, if it, he or she, is accumulating the disproportionate of the available economic resources around it, or around her, or around him, that entity is becoming wealthy. Most of us, in our activities, our daily activities, business, personal, we are normally, we are at best getting normal return to our economic resources, effort that we're putting, and the risk we've taken. Most of us, we are collecting some capital within the economic system and shifting that capital. I earn my wages, I have to pay my expenses. I have to pay rent, food, fuel. So we're doing this. You see on this diagram, economic agents doing this. Faster we do this, better for the economic activity. In fact, there are established economic theories and economic uh, uh, equations that shows higher the vol velocity of money within the economic system, higher the economic output. You can check that independently. The other thing is a multiplier effect. More time this money changes hands within the economic system, higher the economic output. So these two equations show that. So the economic system predicated on a capitalistic system would like the agents to get the money fast, to move it on fast, and in fact, repeatedly do that to have a multiplier effect. Most of us have credit cards. Even before we have received any money, we have shifted it through credit. What happens if within these nodes, these nodes that you see, one of these economic agents actually is accumulating the money? For the purpose of the demonstration, this economic agent is doing this not doing much of this. The overall economic system doesn't like that because that is a localized failure in the market system. But it does happen, which means that a particular economic agent is acquiring, accumulating above normal or extraordinary returns on capital. That means return on the capital or the resources they have used 
over and above the risk they've taken and the effort they've exerted. If an economic agent is acquiring, accumulating economic resources over and above the risk they've taken and the effort they've exerted, they are becoming wealthy in the economic nodes. We've spoken about risk on another module, you recall, uh, day before yesterday, where we said, what's the nature of risk? But if that risk is a systematic and it needs to be encapsulated in the required return on their resources, on their capital, however, they're getting higher than that, most of that, this economic agent, having abnormal return on their resources, over and above the risk they've taken, he, she, or it is becoming what's called in the market-based capitalistic system, wealthy. This outcome is the desired outcome of a strategy or a strategic process within the commercial sector. How does this happen? Two things can happen. One is, for this abnormal return, extraordinary return to happen, is that you have a structural failure. The economic literature, you can do your own research, it says you can have a structural failure around these economic agents, which means the economic agents are as a hat to some strategic assets. I've got the right side, mine side, I've got a very good position for my retail. Or uh, other aspects that the governments now rightfully stop, like I've got privately held information, insider trading, things that is structurally cause a market failure, system failure and we create abnormal returns. Most of those are illegal nowadays. You can't do internal um, information inside the trading. Strategic assets don't come by that easily. You have one which is not replic replicable. You can't have the best mining rights all the time. There's another category of circumstances that creates this possibility of wealth creation. That's called transactional or natural market or system failure, which means the economic agents in a position that creates a localized failure which within the overall economic system that this economic agent is creating more wealth around it. That transactional or natural market failure, as the economic theory puts it, is based on the underlying assets, underlying ability that agent might have. Intellectual property, knowledge, brand name, all those sources of competitive advantage or examples of competitive advantage, they are not tradable easily. I cannot trade knowledge easily because if I divulge my knowledge to you, then it's not worth anything. You cannot price my knowledge because you don't know what it is. So there's a whole lot of contractual confidentiality agreements, non-disclosure agreements to deal with this market failure. You see, market is not very efficient to dealing with knowledge. So I've got intellectual property. I can create abnormal return on that. I've got competitive advantage. I've got a brand name. We will go on later on to see that these brand names are a result of cooperative games resolved as a result of coordination games on flow variables resolved. But the, once you have that stock variable, example of this in commerce is competitive advantage in the form of lower cost production or lower transaction costs or brand names and things like that, then it can actually create around that economic agent that possesses that ability a localized what is called a system failure, which means the agent is gaining over and above their return on their resources. They're getting wealthy. So long session, I would like you to st stay with me on this and summarize. Wealth is a desired outcome in a strategic process within commercial and capital business system. Wealth can happen around an agent if that agent is getting above normal extraordinary return on their capital, on their resources allocated over and above the risk they've taken. This can only happen if that economic agent around himself, herself, or itself can create a localized system market failure. 
For that to happen, it ought to be structural failure, which is based on having a strategic assets or elements that are non-replicable, and most of the time that cannot go on because it's based on a structural failure that the legal system will not allow. Or a transactional natural thing is based on the competitive advantage and the stock variable that they have, and we go on to our sessions to say how that happens. The only way, replicable way of becoming wealthy, which is the outcome of strategy in a business environment, is to create a transactional natural market failure to earn above normal return on your resources. And to do that, you need to have flow variables, coordination games, intuitive thinking access with cooperative games and stock variables and rigorous thinking, and we go back and explain it. But wealth is an above normal allocation of economic resources around the agents. How does it happen? We will cover that after the break.